The Ice Canal in Altenburg, one of the most feared tracks in the ice sliding world, and it's the venue for FIB TV Eastman World Cup number six for women's skeleton. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a wet and sleety Altenburg as we get ready for the first of two runs in the first race after Christmas. I'm Martin Haven, alongside me, Olympic champion John Montgomery. And John, it is an outdoor sport, but you just wish it wouldn't rain quite so much. Sometimes you wish you could take this sport inside. Unfortunately, that's not an option. So uh, we're in the bush in e old East Germany here, uh, competing on what you said was actually quite true, one of the more feared tracks on the international circuit here in Altenburg, Germany. Former secret test track of the DDR until the wall came down. Nobody even knew this place really existed. But as a result, it's got a little bit of a frisson of excitement about this track. It's true. In uh, Before the 88 games in Calgary, they, like you said, they built this track in complete secrecy with the, uh, with the army. Uh, all the building supplies were coming from the town, and people didn't know that it was being constructed in the bush here. You can see the top of the track is quite sedate. There's some long straightaways between these top corners, but coming into corner three here, you want to make sure that you get an early transition into corner four. This is called Omega. It's uh, like the symbol Omega, and it is a two-pressure corner, and it is really hard in skeleton to get off the end of that corner early enough so that you don't get flipped over in five. You'll actually see athletes sometimes flip and sometimes scorpion over into five. Coming through a nice little labyrinth section here, six, seven, eight, and then into nine here. Nine is a big high pressure. You got to turn it into a one pressure corner so you can get off the end and come straight down this extremely long straightaway into Kreisel, which is an actually a real 360 degree corner. Four pressures in here. You want to try and turn it into three. So you want to be a little bit higher at the end and just right here, duck under that last pressure so that you can come early without bumping into 11, nice slow corner here through 12, and into an extremely high pressure, tight radius, corner 13. In 14 here, kind of like corner nine, you want to duck underneath this last small little pressure, and a negative rise here causes athletes to break out. There's no pressure on the runners at that point. Coming into corner 15, you want to get into corner 16 early, the site here of a big crash last year. They fixed the roof in it to prevent more injuries there, and the new finish line, and, uh, and ultimately coming up the outrun here. Well, track record set in a, an Intercontinental Cup race by Germany's Sophia Griebel a couple of seasons ago when she won on this track. She makes her first ever World Cup race start in this morning's field. Well, Marion Thies is our World Cup points leader. We've had five races so far this season, four different winners. Thies won in Whistler in Canada. We've also had wins for Sarah Reid of Canada, for Shelley Rubin of Great Britain, and a pair for Katie Ulander of the USA. Anya Huber, the winner on this track last year. It was a rain, a rather a snow-affected race. It was a one-heat race. And uh, so we got some racers here who haven't raced here for a while. No, Piker Space in the USA. We've got some racers here who have not raced here in World Cup before ever. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of variety in our 21 sliders. I think we run the risk actually today as well of it potentially being another one uh, run contest with the ability of the track crew to actually maintain the consistency of the ice being an extremely difficult task here today. It is potential to see the, uh, the athletes only do a one run race. If it turns out that they can't maintain the track so that it's competitive for the field. A look at the ice temperature. Ice at plus three degrees. Of course, that means it's no longer ice. It's now turning into water. And that's the water falling on the surface where it's measured at the top. There is still ice underneath. But John is a slider, you know, it's going to be pretty skatey, I guess. It is, and I was speaking with Noelle Pike's pace before coming to the race today, and she was indicating that she's on a new set of runners that she's never tried before, and she has actually got some concerns about her skittiness. So we're going to see the athletes probably breaking away a little bit, like you said, skating, uh, and really trying to maintain that parallel runner uh, dimension going down the ice to, so that they don't break speed. Well, here is our start list, including track record holder Sophia Griebel of Germany. She'll start 15th. This is her first ever World Cup race, and a lot of front runners here as well. Well, it's a little foggy as well. The mist hangs in the trees here in Altenburg, so conditions could definitely be better for these sliders. First on the ice, Beesman World Cup number six of the women's skeleton season, and Melissa Hollingsworth of Canada will give us a benchmark. Last year, she had a decent run on this track, finishing in the top half dozen. What can she do here? Coming out of the fog there in the start, it looks a little ominous. 
Geschwindigkeit 46,5. You can see how she's got control here, coming from 3 to 2, or excuse me, 3 to 4. And you can already see the athlete starting to skid there. A little bit of a late entry into 4. And a nice exit and entry into 5 there. Didn't get bumped over and didn't get that scorpion leg effect happening there. See what she looks like coming out of 9 here and down this straightaway. If she can keep her runner straight. That's a really solid effort, nice and early to 10, which is what you have to be to prevent the sled from getting away from you. She does get a bit loopy there on the second pressure, but controls it very nicely at the exit of Chrysler. Decent speeds, 111.8. She's going to have an advantage here coming off the starting block first. Coming through that negative pressure there, really nice control. Didn't break out, and looks like she's put together an extremely solid run here. We can get a time on her, 1 well, minute 72. That is going to be the measure by which I think all others are going to try and compete with today. That's over 2.1 seconds slower than the all-time track record. And John, look, she's not even got momentum left to get up the hill. You know what happens when you're on the highway and you hit standing water? The tires rise over the top of it, but it acts like a brake. Is that the same here? We do get that hydroplane effect here, and you can actually feel it, where you disengage from the ice and you begin to drift left and right. There is no real contact with the ice and the spine at that point, and you're sort of left to being super subtle, Hitting the wall there at the finish line, you're going to see a few other athletes, the ones that know the track a little bit better, they probably won't have as big a hit there, but the finish line is right there, so it probably didn't cost Mel very much at all. You can see her going, I'm skidding all over the place. So sliding on ice is slippery enough. Sliding on ice with water on top is extra slippery. There's Hollingsworth hitting the wall on that exit corner. Next up, Noel Piker's pace. Didn't race in last season, in fact, the last two seasons. So last time she was on the ice here in Altenburg was three or four years ago. Let's see if they give her a Bruce Springsteen tune. They gave Melissa Hollingsworth to Brian Adams. Really long start here. You're going to see some of the slower athletes struggle on the start and definitely have a tougher time competing with the really fast starters here. Ooh, tough break coming out of corner one, taking a bump off that left wall. Nice and early into four there. Controlling that second pressure really well, not even a problem at the exit of four. Already a tenth up. Noelle Pike's pace has had some incredibly blistering runs on some of the various tracks. She hasn't done every race, but in Le Plan, France, you would have seen her compete at the top of the heat. Gap nice control on the second pressure right there, Mark. Gap down to just a hundredth of a second. Will she be in front or go behind? She just accelerates a little bit further ahead. Got a good head of steam, a speed of 113. See what she's got coming out of 14 here with a small bump. 110, higher than Melissa, so she will maintain that heading. She can keep the shiny bits down here, going through 17 and 18, no threat of that. Under the minutes, not quite. 60.40 seconds. She's on tour here with her husband and their two kids. And in fact, they didn't even go home. They uh, stayed in Europe. They went to Disneyland with the kids for Christmas, so. They were in Spain and France all yeah. over the board. Well, you know, I guess once you're in Europe, it's like going to Australia. You want to see as much as you can while you're making that trip over. She's going to be really happy with that. She came all the way to the top. It's a good indication as to what kind of speed you had at the end. Great start for Noelle this year. I think she's brought her A game to the World Cup circuit this year. She's never had nearly as competitive a start as she has this season. She's really stepped up her fitness. And you can see her loading over the crest, which is key to getting a good fast start here. You have to actually make it to the crest and load on that downward trajectory. If you load on the flat, you're going to go slow. Bump out of corner one definitely cost her, so she knows she's even got room for improvement on the second run. Uh, it's always good to have room for improvement. We might get into a tight race here. There's your race leader then. Weighing the sleds at the bottom there, you can see they come down. They do a combined weight first to make sure that you're not over that 93 kilogram threshold, and then they'll weigh the sled to find out how much it weighs. Third starter this afternoon, Lucy Chaffer of Australia. Tenth place finish in last year's snow-affected race. And John Montgomery, with the potential, with the rain here, the potential of it only being a single heat race, you know you've got to bring the A game first time. There's no maker. You want to take advantage of all the good ice you can get. Coming off first here in the first heat, you want to make sure that you get as much of a margin as you can possibly get. Five hundreds behind Noel Pike's pace for Lucy Schaffer off the start. Well, she's going to have to work really hard to get back down this track. You can clearly see the marks the runners leave through the water on the ice. Steering really hard through Omega there. Don't, don't often see such a low line, and you can tell that it's cost her. She's already 1,300 back. What about 
about visibility in the rain? Is it, is it affecting you? Does it stick on the visor? A lot of times the athletes don't see an incredible amount, so I don't think the rain affects vision as much as it does in bobsled. Great exit of Kreisel. Staying off that wall before the entrance of 11, but doesn't have the same heading. Three kilometers an hour slower than Noel Pike's pace coming out of Kreisel. Ooh, and see, there's that negative rise and drift that we were talking about. 107 for speed, slower than both Melissa and Noel. Coming up to finish, she'll be in third spot. 28-year-old teacher from Perth in Western Australia. Lucy Chaffer has managed to choose a sport that means she's in Europe in the winter when it's summer in Australia and goes home for the winter back home. Poor girl. Yeah. She's stuck in a perpetual winter zone. You can see the outrun. It's actually becoming a river of water flowing down there from the top of the outrun down to the bottom of corner 17. Well, of course, you know, water goes downhill, John. The lowest part of the track is not after the finish. It's before the finish. So you'll go through more water before you get to the end. Absolutely. And the, it's funny, the people here at the track have really got it dialed in. They got some Aussie tunes playing for the Australian uh, athletes. I'm sure that this is going to be a theme we'll see through the rest of the day here. I think it might well be absolutely right. They try and choose suitable music for everybody. It may not be your personal choice, but... No, they are on point, though. Arcusta, yeah. former weightlifting world champion, is the track announcer here. Local boy from Dresden. Oh, really? I didn't know that. There you go. Two-time race winner this season, Katie Ulander. Again, as she has done so often, spent the winter break here in Europe. Last year it was in London, this year it was in Germany and Switzerland. Got the star spangled suit on today again today. Over the crest, nice load on the sled. See what she gets for a getaway. 72, fastest one so far, by four hundredths of a second. Good speed as well, fastest through that first trap, and that's all part of the start, John. Not just the speed, but getting the momentum. Definitely, and she lets corner four go a little bit more than some of the athletes we've seen here today. And you can see that she is reaping the benefits for it with a 1700 speed already coming into corner nine. It's a strange sport, isn't it? You talk about the control, you've got to have millimetric precision, but you've got to let it flow. How does that work? You're walking that fine line between doing too much and just enough. Beautiful exit of Kreisel there. You can see she turned that four pressure, pressure corner into a really a three pressure corner. Wow. 13 into 14 here, nice and early. She see if she can keep that parallel coming down 15. Absolutely flying. 110 0 and 111 11 0. Speed, yes. Top speed. She'll take the lead from her teammate Noel Piker's pace. Still right. nobody under the 60 second margin. She's got almost a 3 tenths lead here crossing the finish line. You're probably only going to see the type of uh, people compete with her are those who fly the German flag on their chests. Wow. She's happy with that. You can hear her talking inside her helmet. This track is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Awesome. Well, oh, see, yeah. now, that's the attitude because this is a track that has a bad rep. Well, it does. The people uh, have been somewhat hurt a few times here in corners four, uh, coming out of the exit of Kreisel, but you're always going to have a good time when you come across the line and see a number one on the board. <laughs> it's always fun to see a number one. Yeah, everybody has a bogey track. Whether it's everybody else's bogey track or not, doesn't matter. It is a head game. It, it, it's true, and I, I like the dynamics of this track. I've had some success here in the past, but this week I've spilled out a corner four nearly every single run, and so you might not see a smile on my face tomorrow should I experience that little episode coming out of there, but it is uh, it has got a lot of fun dynamics to it, and it's a quick, challenging track. And if you like to steer, if you like to, uh, to work hard, it's a track for you. Here's another of your teammates, Cassie Horesh. Saw the fast twitch fibers in her legs working overtime there, keeping the heat. She is getting pumped. Don't want to stay down in that crouch position too long. Your muscles actually get a bit tight, so you really want to get down and get gone. Let's see what she gets for a getaway. 581. Tenth off of Katie Ulander. Ooh, small brush off that left wall. That's going to be a trend. It's tough to get out of corner one without hitting that left wall, and she didn't manage to do it today. Nice and early into four. Bit high on the first pressure. Controlled it well and let it go a little bit. She's going to reap the benefits for that. 2200s back already, though. World Cup, uh, rather, America's Cup champion last year. Never raced in Europe before, so this is the first time ever on this track. This is run number seven in her life down Altenburg. She's had a few new tracks this season, and she's uh, taking the challenge well. 
Hortense back, but not bad speed. 112.1, that's pretty good. There's that left-hand hit coming out of nine. That's a tough corner to navigate. Doesn't have the speed at the bottom of the track to compete with who's going to be at the top of the list today. Full place run from Cassie Haresh. 16.86. And from her first or second run today, or uh, earlier in the week, when she was a 107, she can't be disappointed with this. New track, new dynamics, new way of sliding, and I think she's really quite pleased with that run. Well, you know, it's that driver's track thing. There are so many places to get right here. You, you know, you've got to work your way through them. More Brian Adams for the Canadian slider. <laughs> and there are the real key points in this track. Corner four, corner nine, corner 10, and you've really got to get corner 14 to link it all together. The rest is sort of a compose yourself. Coming out of 14, 13 into 14 there, she, or excuse me, I think this is corner nine actually. And she gets a little bit of a pickup here at the end of the corner. That's what we're trying to avoid. And that was corner 14 right there. And then coming over the negative rise, a little bit skiddy. You can see that the runners aren't quite engaged with the ice. And she did a good job of controlling it and not bouncing off the other right hand wall before the entrance of 15. Last year's race winner in Altenburg, Anya Huber. Now, it should be a track that plays well for her teammate, Marion Tis, as well. But Anya's got such a blistering start that it takes a while to catch up with her. Some of the athletes have really stepped up their game this year, and they are competing a lot better with Anya on the start. Good rangy athlete. She's got tall, powerful, long legs, which really is plays to her advantage on a really long start like we've got here in Alton. 562, nice start. Quicker than Katie by already a tenth, and she manages to stay off that left-hand wall coming on to corner one and two. Letting it go nice and easy through four here. Beautiful entrance into five. That's the kind of sliding you want to see. Not doing a whole lot to achieve that smooth line. Got to take it to the roof here, nine. She's a little bit lower than some of the other athletes, but has a nice, smooth exit at corner nine. Can hear her helmet dragging all the way through corner 10. Really carrying that speed. Not quite as well as Noel Pike's pace, but 112 should do to keep her in the lead here. The gaps come right down from 1700s, and oh. she's behind. Doesn't have the same heading. Not nearly even close. 2K or 1.5K behind Katie. Now, is she going to be in second or third? Second it is. Halfway between Katie Ulenda and Noel Pike's pace. Not sure if this is a deteriorating track, uh, playing victim to Anya Huber here in the first run, or if this is part of an exceptional run by Katie Ulander. Well, she shakes her head and maybe just a couple of mistakes creeping in, but certainly the rain isn't going to be helping anybody's pace, but if it's deteriorating with the six slider, goodness knows what is going to happen for the 18th to 21st. Nice straightaway here. Doing very little work to keep off of that left-hand wall coming into corner 10. Gets a little bit high on that first pressure here, but controls it nicely on the second. You can actually get, when the ice is really quick here, disengaged from the ice on that second pressure. Exit of Kreisel. What's she got for speeds? It was a little bit lower than Noel. She was 112 already. Yeah. And the well was 113. The bottom, so she lost a little bit below the Kreisel. And, and then it's flat at that point, Martin, so it's really tough to get that speed back when there's no drop in elevation in the track. First ever World Cup starts for Lizzie Arnold of Great Britain here in Altenburg. Didn't race here before in her World Cup debut season last year. She only did four races. Ooh, bump off that left-hand wall, come out of what? Not what she wanted. Looks like she's got something on her mask or her face inside her helmet. Yeah, a little bit of tape. I don't know whether that's on the face or inside the face mask itself. Really flat. See, there's that bump into five, which, in more pronounced, actually gives you that scorpion effect. Hundreds in the lead. Despite the wildness of the ride, she's taken the lead. Well, this has got a really fluid style, and that's going to help her here in these conditions. She's a really calm slider. She never seems to overreact, and she always maintains her form. But she is dropping back. 112.1, not the uh, the same kind of speed we saw from, from some of the top athletes in the first bit of the heat. Drifting away in third place, quarter second back. Still decent speed at the bottom, 109.9 is the third quickest. Fourth place at the line. Andy Schmidt on the left-hand side, former world champion. 
is Jan on point three two off the lead. 400s behind Noel Piker's pace. And you can see her toes dragging through the puddles there on the in run. Look at both of her toes. She's got tape on them, but because there's so many places in this track where you use your toes to steer, it really destroys our shoes. And uh, her tape is evidence of that, just dragging off the back of her feet coming up the outrun. Uh, pretty miserable conditions for everybody. Keji Lender leads from Anya Huber. Nice and early into corner four here. You want to use the beginning of that corner to actually set your line a little bit lower. She does get quite high here at the end, and you can see her get a bit topsy-turvy into corner five. Not so bad, but that definitely didn't help her game. There's the tape from her shoe. Yeah, she'll be Ooh, she's supposed to be getting weighed with that. She's oh, dropping okay. it. <laughs> Ked Ulander leads from Anya Huber. Noel Pike's pace lies in third place. You got to get weighed on the scale at the bottom of the track with everything that you came down with. Next up, Sarah Reed of Canada started her World Cup campaign with a gold medal in Lake Placid back in November. John, she's had two silver medals as well, so that's three podium finishes in five stars. She's really on fire this year. Oh, no, really a breakout season for Sarah. A 4.69, not the kind of start she wanted, and she's had two hits already before the exit of corner two. So that's going to cost her, and another one there before three. She's really, I think, struggling a bit with the control on this slippery, slushy ice. There's a bit of that topsy-turvy entry into five. And you're going to see her three-tenths back by the corner of exit five. Small pickup, really nice control off the end of nine. But those small mistakes at the top have really started to accumulate and are costing her in her downtime. A little bit of a bump before 11. We'll see if she gets that bit of a turn in corner 12, which can be really challenging. Lowest speed of all out of the Chrysal. Even the cameras are challenged here with the weather today. You can see that lens all fogged up. That can sometimes happen to the inside of your visor on days like today. Yikes. 101.58 for Sarah Reed. Not going to add to her gold medal tally today. You'd really like to be able to blame that one on the weather, but unfortunately a few rider, <laughs> sorry, pardon the pun, rider errors uh, cost her some time dearly on that run. And when the conditions are as sloppy as they are, it's really pronounced. You don't get to get away with anything. And there's that uh, entry into corner five that plagues so many athletes. Letting her second pressure get a little bit away from her. She dips really low after the first one and gets quite high, really high on that second pressure. That's letting it go, but that might be letting it go just a shade too much. Smile on her face nonetheless. I know she's not going to be happy. But she's jury, always saying hello to the fam. The jury have confirmed not only are they hurrying up the speed of the sleds, there will be no break after the top ten. Normally we'd have a break of two minutes, but that's two minutes more rain on the ice. Next up, Shelley Rubin of Great Britain. Bronze medal in last year's race here in Altenburg. She's just going to be struggling to get down the track today. She was miserably sick, apparently atrociously sick, all week long. Just the body was fighting her on every aspect, trying to stay hydrated. Uh, wasn't able to keep anything down and probably is a bit weak. We may see that in her start here today. Well, she's had just two runs in training. Partner Kristen Bromley didn't train yesterday. He hurt his back. Oh, no. Well, I got a, an urgent message from her just before I flew out here. Please bring Lucas aid. So uh, I brought the medical supplies. It's about the only thing that, as an athlete, you can take. You know, when I get ill, I just throw stuff down my throat. But with your abandon, you just can't do that as an athlete. You have to be really cautious, really cautious. You saw her start there. Looked like she was having even technical problems, not to mention the fact that she might be physically weak here. And with the slowest start of the heat so far, she's already 2200s back. And she's picking up. Wow, she is burning rubber down to the exit of Kreisel here. Well, you know, she probably feels just vile. Hot, cold, hot, cold, thick head and everything, but... Poor navigation of Kreisel really cost her because she had a head of steam going in there. She picked up time that other athletes just weren't seeing. And it's really cost her with that uh, navigation of Kreisel here at the bottom of the track. Her speeds are down, and she destroyed that heading that she had going into that corner. 101.02, so she's in seventh place at the moment. As Kristen Bromley, her partner, and again, he spent most of the day in bed yesterday. 
while Shell was training. She's going to be looking at a timesheet, noticing where she did exceptionally well. You know, corners four through nine were hot. She was coming down that straightaway into Kreisel with a real heading, but a poor navigation. If they'll show that replay, here it is. That could have screwed her up there at the entrance of Kreisel, sending her a bit high, and you see her get panicked as she gets low here. And then the feet come apart. The panic steer skidding her sled at the exit of the corner. And she burned up all of her energy by uh, putting that toe down really hard, really aggressively, and potentially skidding out her sled at the end of Kreisel. Uh, normally, she's pretty happy to be on an ice track. You think there are a uh, 100 other places she'd rather be. One of Next those days, up. she didn't want to go into the office. Yeah, no kidding. World Cup leader wearing a yellow vest is Marion Thies of Germany, just off the podium, held off by Shelley Rudman last year into fourth place. But again, John, lots of corners, tricky conditions where control is everything, and this girl knows how to find speed. Marion Thies is one that can really let you know what the track is doing. She is such a consistent slider, such a great navigator, and we're going to find out how this track is holding up here right now. We have cheers from the crowd for a German athlete. Slowest start by quite a margin, a 6-10. She's got a 4 tenths deficit before she enters corner one, and she's going to try and chip away at every piece of that before the bottom of the track here. Nice early entrance into four. Smooth line with very little effort. She gave away nearly half a second to her teammate on Huber just in the start. Coming out of quarter nine here is where she's going to start to pick up some of that time. She's going to be five tenths back coming out of five. Let's see where she's at. She's starting to pick away. Is the track long enough today? Are the conditions good enough? We're about to find out. What's her speed coming out of Kreisel? 114.6. She may very well take that four tenths deficit and stuff it in a hole and bury it. Top three tenths. 111, 112, five. One, She's coming. 1.5K faster than Katie Elander at the bottom of the track. Oh, Ooh. not enough though. Third place. Wow. Not enough track for Marion Thies today. But a fantastic run, and you can see that the track hasn't deteriorated too badly. I think perhaps had she had a little bit of a better ice quality today, you might have seen that uh, margin of two tenths really disappear at the bottom of the track. Surely there's a bit of an effect there in her coming off the hill in tenth place. Little worse ice perhaps than the girls in front of her. A little worse uh, ice conditions, but a real deficit at the start. When you're starting with a 6.10 compared to a 70, four tenths back from the leader at the top of the track on any day is a tough, tough challenge. Only five hundredths of a difference in speed coming out of Kreisel, but she had one half a kilometer, excuse me, but uh, she had one and a half kilometers better speed at the exit of 14. So she took that half a kilometer and multiplied it. Well, she's in a tight battle for the podium. She's 2300s off the lead, 500s ahead of Noel Piker's pace, 900s ahead of Lizzie Arnold. So that's a three-way battle already. A good skeleton race. That's where they should be, bunched up tight. Michelle Steele of Australia didn't race in Altenburg last season in the World Cup either. 26 years old from Bundaberg in Queensland. Using that two-handed push, really bounding off the block. The timing eye doesn't start right away, so you have an opportunity to build up speed before you get there. Back on the start already with the smallest athlete in the field here. Doing a bit of the Gregory Hines toe tap and coming down the straightaway into corner three. Super flat through four, doing a lot of work there, I think, at the beginning. But she's still maintaining that, uh, that heading she had, only 300s back. Wow, she is right in amongst them. Best result this season, Winterberg, fifth place, still only 700s off the lead. Ooh, to the roof on the second pressure, skids the sled. It's going to cost her. She's not going to have the speed, and that bump before 11 is going to set her back even further. 107.2 to the 114 of Marion Thies. Uh, she's gone from 700s to 8 tenths behind below the Chrysler. She's going to be hoping for a top 10 coming across this finish line. Wow, it's looking like a top three at the top and a top ten below. Ninth place with a 1.2 seconds back of our leader at this point. Well, her nearest target, Shelley Rudman, is three tenths in front. Her teammate Lucy Chaffer is just six hundreds behind, showing how close the Aussie girls are paired. But that was two different halves of a run, wasn't it? Absolutely. Coming down the straightaway here, 
She's got really good runner control, but coming into the corner, you can see the pressure get away from her on that second wave, and she goes to the roof. Well, there, she was looking for the lead at the bottom. She was just looking for some redemption somewhere. And this is where she lets it go just a bit too much. Is getting that big dip there on the second pressure. Disappears completely below that short wall and gets way to the roof there and down low again. And a bit of the panic. The toe comes out. The, skids, uh, the sled skids, excuse me. And a uh, real slow heading coming out of Kreisel. You just can't maintain your speed if you don't maintain a parallel runners with the ice. Next up, Austria's Janina Flock didn't make the second heat or wouldn't have made the second heat last year. 21st on her first run. That's a little bit of 5.79 getaway. And one of the things we've seen over the last 12, 14 months is her athletic prowess has got much better in the start area. As the athletes evolve in the sport, so too must their athletic prowess, as you called it. And uh, her starts have really picked up, which allows her to be more competitive on every single track. She's only a tenth back right now. And where the things really uh, start to fall apart for the athletes here is in Kreisel. A small skiff there on the right-hand side now and the left. 1700s deficit going in. We'll see what kind of heading she has coming out. It's a better job in controlling the pressures on the Kreisel. Little skid on the exit. Plus 10.2. Not too bad. Eighth place at the moment. 108.4. Bit of a skid through 15 there. It's not going to help her cause, for sure. Can she break into the top half dozen? Not quite. Eighth place on the first run. Coach Martin Rettel. Olympic silver medalist. Doesn't seem too disappointed with that for his athlete. Again, you can see as they come up the in-run, the rain's still falling pretty consistent. Should I turn the heating up? Uh, I think that we should leave it just as is. Yeah. When they, you'd think that maybe they could just crank the refrigeration on the track to make this water turn into ice, but unfortunately it turns into ice crystals and a lot of frost, which slows you down. Coming out of Kreisel here, you see she gets picked up there on that last fourth pressure. The corner's done, and what it wants to do is push you far right, and she did. She hit the right-hand wall before the entrance of 11 and had to do quite a bit of work just to get out of that corner without taking a bit of an air trip. Olympic champion John Montgomery joining me, Martin Haven, in the booth here. Six women's skeleton World Cup race of the year. British coach Andy Schmidt with his young charge, Donna Crichton. And she's one of a number of sliders, including her teammate Lizzie Arnold, who didn't race in World Cup here in Altenburg last season. There was no World Cup race the year before either. And she was racing in the second tier in the Intercontinental Cup. Donna's going to be going to be trying to bust into the five point sixes here on the start, compete with Anya Huber and Sarah Reed on the start. Interesting, like Anya, she starts off with that hand behind the back position, but there's only a couple of the athletes use, and they are the very quickest. So try to get that cadence so that you don't get out of sync with your foot. Now, 564 is a, is a great getaway, but that left hand hit come out of corner one, pushed her away, and she's doing the toe tap and a bit of a skid into corner three. You're going to see her already in a deficit coming out of corner four. 800s up at the start, turns into 600s behind. Nice and smooth. The athletes want to take the sled high there in corner nine so that you can avoid that little blip at the end of the corner here. Three tenths down, coming down the straightaway. Let's see if she uses minimal steering to navigate Kreisel. Bit high at the end, stay off that right hand wall into 11, but she's six tenths back with only a one point. 08 kilometers an hour heading coming out of Kreisel. Oh, two hits. That's definitely going to cost her. She's going to go from a second back to probably 1.5 seconds by the bottom of the track here. Yeah, that's going to make it a little tough to make even a top 15 finish. And one mistake sends her skating all over the track. Coming through that corner 14 to 15 section there with that negative rise, those two hits, like I said, can be as much as five tenths of a loss of speed and momentum into corners 15, 16, and 17 in the bottom of the track. It's amazing when you actually slide on ice, just what tiny differences can result in a huge loss or gain of speed. No question. And we call it sliding, but the thing is, we don't actually want to slide. We want to maintain some level of small traction, maintain a straight parallel line, and you can see when an athlete is drifting, and as she does there, just a little bit skidding, that's sliding in, in an actual sense, and that's not what you want to do. 
Her head's going straight, but her body's at 35 degrees. And as you know from skiing and ice skating, that slows you down. Next up, Catherine Eustace, one of her better results last season. The Kiwi finishing in ninth place here in Altenburg. Let's see what the Christmas holidays have done for her start. She had a fantastic first half, especially with her starts. I'd like to see if she can maintain that trajectory all the way up to St. Moritz. This should be a good indicator where she's at physically. That looks pretty good. Ooh, but a small step or slip step on her load, which might cost her 71. She looked like she loaded, and certainly uh, the sled didn't break sideways on her, which is, you know, a small mercy. You can sometimes see that slip step, and it pushes the athlete right out of the groove. She got lucky there. Real high on that first pressure. She's going to have to work hard to skid that sled on the second to not hit before five. She managed to do that pretty well. 600's back now. A bit late to seven and a bit early on to eight there. Well, John, how much different are the conditions, do you think, from where they were in training? I mean, certainly very wet for a start. We've had kind of bogus conditions all week, unfortunately. The weather hasn't been fantastic. Uh, and you saw her hit out of Kreisel there, 106.4. So she's really at a deficit in speed. But you've got Ralph, the ice meister here in Altenburg. He is the absolute best in the world. 104.2 for speed at the bottom of the track. Catherine's really going to be struggling just to maintain a top 15 position probably by the end of the heat here 14th right now we'll see what the other athletes have to offer but ralph is an exceptional ice meister this is his job this is his life they have real workers here that do this dedicated year round and if anybody can maintain the quality of the ice it's the guys in altenburg and so you know if it's slowing down there's nothing anybody can do about it in the world well these guys have been doing this since the track opened uh, you know they put so much effort into this altenburg track and as you said, she's, uh, Catherine Eustace here has had some great starts this year. You know, she's given away a decade to most of her rivals. And See, there's that slip yeah. step I was talking about, a bad last step. And that's the one that you really want to try and get as much trajectory off of that last strike as possible. And she didn't take advantage of that, unfortunately. She probably could have been in the 60s there. Well, next up is a young lady from Germany who is our track record holder. We have never seen her before in World Cup action. This is her debut slide, Sophia Griebel. And uh, Sophia is 22 years old. She's from the Oberhof track where she started as a loser. In a couple of years, well, a few years sliding in luge from when she was 10, went to the sports high school there before being poached by the skeleton team. And that's not uncommon practice. Anya Huber was a loser before she was a Skeletor too, and they bring that real profound sense of what it is to slide as an athlete into the sport of Skeleton and make a really quick transition. Certainly a World Cup debut athlete, but no stranger to the Saltenberg track. 585 getaway, that's the 12th quickest start. There's that kick we see from all the German athletes at the second pressure. I might have to try that tomorrow, see if it'll help me navigate that tricky corner four. Okay, well, she's already 0 0.32 behind. You want to rethink that? Well, she might start to pick away at it here. I'm noticing that she's having a bit of control issues, and she's not gaining time right now, which leads me to believe that she's not going to do it by the bottom of the track. Well, you know, anywhere else, or anyone else, coming to Altenburg for your first ever World Cup race, you might think, OK, she's a bit tight, understandable nerves, track with the rep. She's a German girl. She's slid on this since she was, I don't know what. You know, We've 16, got expectations, 18. yeah. And yeah. Uh, she is the track record holder. So she's somebody that I would think should have a much better result than what she's got here with a 10th place. Yeah. And you could see that she was a bit uncomfortable. Her shoulders were up. Her head was up. Again, you've got to think, you know, what was the weather forecast compared to the women's bobsleigh race this morning? It was dry. Okay, you know, at lunch, it was dry. It only started raining half an hour before the start of the race. Her runners may well be suited to the track as it was an hour ago, but not now. No question. These athletes were warming up on the dry uh, pavement up top. It started to snow probably or rain just as they were going into the start house to change. And you know what? She's uh, a World Cup debut athlete here today. And you can see just uncomfortableness there with her shoulder up, looking around. When the cameras are on, when it's the World Cup, you get a profound sense of pressure that may have built in Sophia today, not lending itself to her realizing her best possible performance. She's a great athlete, and I think she'd be wanting better for herself than that. Yep. 
former race winner on this track as well in the junior level, so uh, she has got plenty of experience. Now they're recutting the groove, and that's not because it's filling up with ice, but because it's getting slushy and starting to cave in a little, maybe. That's something that you never see them do. Uh, you may have protests from coaches on that one, because the, essentially the groove isn't the same for all the athletes now. It's been cut, and sometimes coaches take exception to that. Trying to dig the slurry out of it, but it's left some slurry by the side. Joska Lacons and Levens gets away in 5.76. Who really pushed away from that left-hand wall hit out of corner one, having to work all kinds of magic to get the trick sled back on track. Real high, the first pressure. Quite low, but no problem getting into corner five. Her teammates in the Dutch women's bobsleigh crew came up with a fourth position run in this morning's race. As we canvas had a great day, can Joska Lecon get up into the top half dozen? Well, at the moment, it's going to be tough. She's dropped from 8th at the start down to 16th place on split times at the Chrysler. 1.1 seconds back already, and with a heading of 107, she's not going to be able to claw her way back into within a second of Katie Ulander at the moment. 104 at the bottom, that may be the slowest speed now. We have seen a 104.2 from Catherine Eustace. But again, John, 16 of our 21 sliders in. It doesn't look like the track's helping them in any way. They are just getting slower and slower. You would expect that because they're less highly ranked than the fastest 10, but... They also get penalized by the deteriorating conditions, and you can see that river of water widening that's coming down the outrun as yeah. we speak. You know, you're only wearing spandex, it's barely above freezing, and then you're splashing through ice-cold puddles as well. This is fun. Uh, some might call it that. Some might call it something else. Really high at the entrance of corner four here, which allows the sled to really get a profound dip, and she has to work that much harder to keep it low at the end of the corner here. Coming in late to Kreisel, taking it to the roof, to the belly, and back to the roof again. And the ice isn't as manicured or as fresh, perhaps, as, uh, as it might be in the middle of that corner as it is at the top. So you runners get up into that frost, and it certainly slows you down even more. Message back home. You see the real cooperation between the nations here. You see some British athletes in the in the coach's box and helping her with her sled at the bottom. Yasuka doesn't have her own coaches uh, or support staff, and so the other nations help out in that respect. It's a real team atmosphere here in the skeleton world. A return to World Cup action for Svetlana Vasilieva. This is her first World Cup, uh, back in her second World Cup appearance of the season. The Russians are circulating their World Cup athletes with bewildering patterns. Yeah, they're in uh, St. Moritz right now. Some of the top athletes, Trechikov and Chudinov from the men's side. Some of their other uh, Polachina, she's not in the race today. She's away training for World Championships in St. Moritz. Nice early entrance into four. That was a beautiful line. Good start as well, 571. She had good momentum. Only 800s back at this point, but I'm sure you'll see that margin grow as you get towards the bottom of the track where the conditions are worse than they are at the top of the track. 2800s back from fourth at the start down to ninth place. And of course, John, you're really on a hiding to nothing here because the, the conditions are definitely worse, and so you're, you're on a slower track. The question is, now, can they maintain the integrity of the track long enough in the second heat to give those who are at the top right now, the KDU Landers, uh, the Noel Pikes Paces, a chance to compete in the second heat? And if they can't, if it's really deteriorating and they're dropping behind the athletes like Svetlana, it will become a one-run race. Well, you've got to hope, you know, when you're coming out late, like Svetlana, and the conditions are much worse, that the rain doesn't stop because then the track will harden progressively through the second heat and get faster and faster. So you lose in the first heat and you'll lose in the second heat. What you want is for the track to get progressively worse. So actually, it takes away some of that deficit. And she'll have the advantage in the second run. That's the... That's why they do reverse the yeah. order, is to give those who didn't have the best ice in the first run a chance for some better ice in the second run, and Svetlana's going to be looking to take advantage of that, hopefully. Then hopefully you'll end up with a big climax right at the end where it all gets very tight. Casey Ulander is the woman who will defend a lead into the second heat from Anja Huber and Marion Thies of Germany. Noel Piker's pace in her third World Cup race of the season, lying in fourth spot.
Well, we've had 17 athletes down, four to go. So three more places in the race. One of the 21 sliders will not get a second run. Last year, Leila Priyadjilana of Latvia made her World Cup debut here. She was only 22nd in the final count. Loading on top of the crest there. She wanted to take a few more steps and be able to load on that downward trajectory. And 578 could have been improved, I think, had she taken a couple more steps. Maybe her coaches will tell her that. Well, she's been sliding now oh since 2010. This is her beginning of her third full year. So again, giving away lots of experience to pretty much anyone else in the field. She has, but what she's uh, done so far is look like she's got some really decent lines. Not the time to represent it, but some, uh, some good lines. I mean, Noel had already been forced out by injury and retired before this girl even started. <laughs> no kidding. And now had two babies and back at it. Five-tenths of a deficit, deficit going into Kreisel here. Easy for you to say. Yeah, no kidding. One-ten for speed. Not bad compared to the last lot that we've seen come through Kreisel. She maintained a pretty good heading going through that corner, obviously doing as little work as possible, and a nice smooth line out of 14 down into 15. Again, you know, she's being smooth, but the, the speeds aren't great, and I don't think anybody's going to get close to what the front runners were doing. No, I think she's got to be pretty pleased with that run, though. As far as execution is concerned, she managed to stay off the wall. She kept her runners straight. Uh, she had decent form the whole way down the track, and I think she probably could have done better had she had a little bit better ice and uh, a better day. And she will make the second heat. She has got two other athletes behind her at the moment. In 18th and last spot is Joska Leconte. So the Dutch girl is in the drop zone. Nice and low through that first pressure. You can see that she was almost a complete sled lower on both the first and second pressure coming into that corner. Whether that was through some tough steering or some uh, decent navigation or some uh, efficient sled setup, we're not sure, but she did it well. Next up, Olga Nikandrova of Russia. And again, just two World Cup starts this season. She was 20th in Lake Placid, didn't make the cut in Salt Lake City. She did a couple of Intercontinental and Europa Cup races. Now she is back as their new Junior World Champion, Olga Nikitina, is training with Olga Potilitsina. And with a 21-woman field today, one poor lady is not going to get a second run. So they're all trying to not be that girl. Well, it could be one of the two Russian Olgas. We've got uh, Nikandrova and Korobkina coming up behind her. Olga squared at the end of the round here. Yeah. And with a 590 start, 17th fastest, she's going to have her work cut out for her to make that second heat. Can clearly see through the water the marks that the runners leave. Real smooth line through four, got a real nice early entry. Helped her set that line low. Well, John, it kind of looks like the rain is slowing down outside our window, but it's going to take a while before that actually is reflected in the track. We can't hear it on the microphone as, as bad as we could a few minutes ago, so it might be slowing down, but I think that the, the frost is starting to build up. You can see it in the tops of the corners, the parts where the athletes aren't sliding on. You can see those small crystals forming. Only 105 kilometers an hour there compared to 110 or 114 of the fastest. 104.3 here. She's in 18th spot. And she does sneak in front of Joska Leconte. So she has made the second heat. She will get a second run if there is one to be had. But again, must feel like you're doing no speed at all through the finish corner. <laughs> when you're not making the crest, you know you weren't going fast. When you've got to push your sled up to the finish line, you don't even want to look at the clock. High through corner three there allows her to get over really early to corner four. And look at her line through here. Low and flat. There's hardly even a drop or a low point in that corner. Carries it through smoothly and doesn't get that scorpion leg. On much faster ice, you'll see a lot more girls go over and guys go over at the entrance to corner five there. Olga Nikandrova is in 18th place of our 19 sliders, two to go. Next up is the third of our Russian girls, Olga Korobkina. So the Russians with effectively World Cup sliders ranked fourth, fifth and sixth in the race. Their top three are all elsewhere training for the World Championships. 
all these Russian athletes are using Duker sleds. Uh, Duker's out of Latvia build sleds as well, and the Russians on the World Cup and some of the IC here are using them. 6.05, 19th spot. We're going to see if she can maintain that or a 20th to get a second run. That's her goal right now. Not as early in as Olga first into corner four. A bit more oscillation, and there you see the hit before five. She didn't even make the profile. She got a flat hit, and this may be your 21st slider coming down the track right now. Seven tenths back here by the exit of corner eight. Drifting all over the straight, hits the wall on both sides, ends up in just about the right place going onto the Chrysler, but without the control, John. Dragging the toe the whole way through the corner is more of a panic steer than it is uh, a game plan. Bumping out of corner 12 there, hitting the walls here. 102.8, the slowest speed. This will be your 21st slider and the only one, unfortunately, in the women's field that doesn't get to see the second heat. Oh, 20th! Know. We still she have one to go. We still right. have Delia Eva, so... Yeah, the I think the Romanian slider. Yeah, that is going to be the battle between the two of them. Well, at least... Uh, the Romanian slider knows what she has to do yeah. to get into the second run now. If you get down in under 63 seconds, then you might just be in. Coming into Kreisel here, you can see that she's already got almost both toes down on the ice. I think she's just sort of trying to slow herself down, gets to the roof there on the second pressure, and then again the toe comes down and stays down to the exit of the corner. Getting a bit of a toss in corner 12, which is where we saw Stefan Morker from Switzerland last year, three years ago, faceplant coming out of that corner, and that made the highlight reel for a, a number of races after that. Yeah, we don't let you forget those things. No, <laughs> when you mess up in skeleton, they seem to remind you of it week after week on the highlight reel. We can thank John Morgan and crew for that. It's the guys in the tape room. They're, they're just mean and nasty. <laughs> Got to make it look crazier than it is. Next up, Delia Ivas of Romania. Last year in this race, she was 26th of the 26 sliders. She needs to be 20th place here. She's got a best, a 62.98 run to make the second heat. The Romanians were some of the first athletes I watched come down the track when we got here on Monday. And I almost wanted to stop watching them go through corner four because it was a little scary. Let's see if she can navigate it a little bit better here today than she did on the first day of training when I watched her. She had a 6.34 slide, and the first not to even get to 46 kilometers an hour in the first corner. And that's the first Scorpion we saw. I don't know if somebody's told her or not that she needs to really steer that second pressure. She got so low, lower than any other athlete, in corner four, and subsequently did the Scorpion at the end of the corner. Well, that's gonna hurt, right? Well. It's not so painful a hit as a lot of the other ones on the track because you get turned over gently, but she hit the flat wall almost before corner five, and that definitely hurts. Last year, her rookie season, she didn't make the second heat in any of the races she started. Maybe at some point this season, we will have a field with 20 athletes, and she'll be guaranteed one. Yeah. If only the Russians hadn't sent athletes <laughs> number four, five, and six, she'd have been in, but she's not. 104.60 is the run. So she didn't get in under 63 seconds. Dalia Ivas will not make the second heat. Well, still just 24 years old and with only three or four years of ice sliding. Watch her. She wasn't even in view of the camera there when she came out from underneath that blind. And I've done that numerous times this week. And so I know how difficult that corner is. And uh, the young slider that she is, uh, she will only get better with time, we hope. Because I've been at this 10 years and I still mess that corner up. Well, I'm being told to ask you, we're going to see that tomorrow? If you see that from me tomorrow, you may see my helmet fly across the finish line. Uh, without me, because okay, I will not be a happy John camper. Morgan. It was, it was his question. <laughs> Katie Ulender, our race leader after the first of our two heats here at the DKB Ice Canal. She leads by 17 hundredths of a second from last year's race winner. Tuffy Latour looking pretty happy with that. Pretty happy, pretty proud. And Katie was talking in her helmet before she got it off. You knew she was happy with that run. Yeah. Wow, good job. She's fully acclimatized to life in Europe now after a winter of German food. She leads from Anja Huber and Marion Thies in the medals, but by a whisker from Noel Pikers Pace and Lizzie Arnold. There is a close battle there ahead of Melissa Hollingsworth and Shelley Rudman, nine tenths away, and probably desperate to get back to getting under the duvet and staying warm 
fighting the flu. Donna Crichton, 15th place, disappointing from her off a good start. See if she can tidy that up for the second heat and aim towards the top 10. And the one girl who will be watching from the sidelines is Romania's Delia Ivas. She comes in 21st place. The fast 20 will go in take that two. So join us for all the action from the second heat. Wiesmann FIBT World Cup number six here in Altenburg, Germany. Can Katie Ulender make it win number three? Or will the Germans seize the initiative on home ice?